Hi, I'm Jim Griffith. I'm a volunteer at the Cumberland County Historic Society, and my wife and I own Create a Palooza in town as a paint your own pottery store just two blocks away. So for the past few years, we've been heavily involved with volunteering and planning the local Christmas parade and Santa comes to town activities. And why we're doing this today is because this is the ABCs of Cumberland County, and this is X for Christmas, or Xmas as it's sometimes abbreviated. So Cumberland County itself has always been a crossroads and many holiday traditions have been celebrated here. Uh, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, Diwali, the Festival of Lights. Uh, Christmas has been in my family tradition. So when I think of Christmas, I think of that connection I have with my ancestors being lucky enough that I came from people who lived here. So there's a, when I see old Christmas pictures, I see my family history, which is neat. I'm also particularly lucky because my great grandfather was a local photographer and he was the manager of the Carlisle Opera House, which by coincidence used to stand in, under the newer section of the Historic Society. So we're mere feet from where he worked. And as the manager of the Opera House, um, he worked with glass lantern slides. This is an original slide that he actually worked with over a hundred years ago and, it, and my family donated in 72 with many other artifacts. So it's just awesome that it's here. Um, and then here you see a full color blow up of what that looked like. So this was the Christmas Seals program and it began in 1907. It continues to this day. But Christmas Seals um, are stamps that you buy and you put on an envelope when you mail and they contributed extensively to eradicating tuberculosis and they still serve causes such as cancer and children's diseases. And then here it's a little, it's a little smaller but it's an example of how the newspapers would promote all the local local merchants and organizations that would sell the Christmas seals. So what he was doing was just showing an intermission slides that would you know, showcase the program. Um, and what you see all around me are examples of photographs from the Cumberland County Historic Society's photo archives. And so when, my, when I and other volunteers were working on planning the Christmas events, a few years ago, one of my fellow volunteers came upon the idea of showcasing artifacts that might still be in the area. And so she came to the Historic Society initially and asked for some photos from Richard Tritt. And here is one example that shows the uh, plastic reindeer that used to be mounted in town. And just by pure luck, we connected with someone locally who had some of them, and they were rewired a few years ago and hung. And we put that on a Christmas ornament. One thing led to another, and we learned that the Historic Society still has one of the original Santa Claus decorations. And so that was amazing, and we really wanted to put that on an ornament. The problem was we didn't have a good photograph of it. So that is when I initially really began de diving deep into the pictures. And so we would, we would actually work with um, the society and using their resources. And um, just to put it directly, I mean, the Historic Society doesn't have an infinite staff and they have almost infinite resources. So for me or others or yourself, if you wanna do research at the Historic Society, they're glad to teach you how to perform such research. And there are tools like a program called Past Perfect where you can search their archives and photos. And then once you have the number, that's where someone like Richard can be helpful and he can pull the negative or he could help you identify a little more information about how that fits into your search. And what we would do is we would take, or especially when I did this work later on, is I'd take all these photographs and I'd look for clues or details or context that might lead to something else. Like we, we began a very in-depth hunt for the Christmas trains. Well, how neat would it be to find one of the trains that still exists? And so like in these pictures, I noticed that Willow Mill appears, Willow Mill Special. That was lent by the Willow Mill Park. And that led to talking to people like Freddie Wardecker, who told me that his father and him used to drive down and pick up the train with a rented truck in the 40s. And so that type of lead, one thing led to another. And unfortunately, it seemed pretty certain that this train was lost in the 1972 Agnes flood. Um, Willow Mill lost quite a few of their attractions. Um, it doesn't mean that one of the three or four trains that we've identified isn't out there somewhere. It just means that they're pretty hard to find. Um, but that's fine. I mean, there's so much, such a wealth of stories and history and, and even all the different Santa houses that have appeared on the square. Uh, we actually know the location of several 
several. You might have seen two of them recently. One was made by Tucky a few years ago, and it's coming back this year. Another that's been around for about 30 years is now painted blue, and it's used as a cocoa house. We won't have it out this year, but it'll be back in the future. So um, it's, it's just there's a great, wonderful legacy of, of public celebration of Christmas in the area. And we're so lucky that the Historic Society has such a detailed, deep collection. Um, we're able to retrace, like, like but when, when the lighting was different in town, they used to hang these decorations, um, and how that's evolved into having the, the antique lampposts, and, and it's changed over the years. So, so everyone has, in a sense, like their Christmas memory of when they were a kid, including me. Um, but there's something um, remarkable about each era or, or as the celebrations have changed. And, and even like the Historic Society benefits, we have all these kids shown in all these pictures. So as families are doing research and as technology continues to evolve, it's going to be possible even to use, say, um, automated intelli uh, artificial intelligence and, and find these people. And it's amazing uh, over time. And that, that's where the Historic Society really benefits from community support is... Even if you have in, in your family photo album old photos of town events, I mean, that's something to consider, not necessarily donating in your photo, but sharing it with the society, and they could scan those. It would add to their collection. Or if you identify people who they can't identify, it's a puzzle piece that might fill in another story. And in a sense, that's really what this is. This is a collective uh, community memory of the county. And, and that's something very important that over time we'd want to keep growing and expanding. And I, I'm not the only one who has family ties here. I mean, this, this is a lot, anything in here originally was special to someone. And so it's neat that that legacy still exists. Uh, and with that, I'll wrap up and I appreciate the chance to, to share my area of interest.